Tenth Amendment box is titled Our Daily Bread. In speaking of the bread of life, Jesus calls it our daily bread. The reason for this is fundamental. Our contact with God must be a living one. It is our momentary attitude that gov governs our being. A short scripture from 2 Corinthians verse, uh, chapter 6, verse 2. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, <clears throat> now is the day of salvation. The most futile thing in the world is to seek to live upon a past realization. The thing that means spiritual life to you is your realization of God here and now. Be thankful for yesterday's experience, knowing that it is with you forever in the change of consciousness that is brought about. But do not lean upon it for a single moment for the need of today. The manna in the desert is the Old Testament prototype of this daily nourishment. The people wandering in the wilderness were told that they would be supplied with manna from heaven every day, but they were on no account to try to save it up for the morrow. When notwithstanding the rule, some of them did try to live upon yesterday's food, and the result was pestilence or death. So it is with us. The art of life is to live in the present moment and to make that moment as perfect as we can by the realization that we are the instruments and expression of God himself. So we are lucky enough to have Lori Kay do our talk today. <laughs> Lori, what was the uh, title of your talk? God says you first. Go for it. Okay. I was thinking about how we seem to sit around waiting for a lot of things. We, we wait for God to respond. We wait for the healing. We wait for the thing that we've prayed for. We wait to see things manifest or so it seems. And while we're waiting, we have reactions to this. And so we make things up, you know, I'm having to wait because God wants me to be patient. He wants me to learn patience. Um, I'm waiting because I'm being tested. I'm waiting because whatever. We make up all kinds of things. And then I know I can get angry because I feel I can feel somewhat powerless over what is happening. Or I used to feel a great, great deal more powerless. In those moments, it feels like we're waiting on God. So... It seems to me that this goes straight to what our relationship with God is, the nature of our relationship and what it allows us to do or not do, be or not be, have or not have. So I have a question for you. If I gave you three different kinds of gods, three different kinds of types of God, which of them or what combination of them do you feel, and I will tell you what they are in a second, but which of them would you feel really is the one that you respond to in your life that you that shows its reality in your life? Are you responding most to the relationship of God as the parent, the one who punishes or rewards for some reason that you may or may not understand? Or, is, or do you have God the order taker? God, I want this. You, you're supposed to give it to me. <laughs> if you don't, I'm going to be mad at you. Or do you have the God who has did everything for you to use as you will with your free will? The God who's already given all of the building blocks of everything. If the last one is your primary understanding of God, your primary practice of God, experience of how you interact with your own true existence, then 
you are in the place where you can take your place as co-creator. I'm going to read some phrases that we all, we all know these really, really well. And I just want to ask you to think as I read them, which of the gods that I've mentioned is the one that goes with them the most? Like which one goes with, there's nothing you cannot have. There are no limitations. Can you fit God the parent with that? Not very comfortably. Unless you want to have somebody putting limitations on your limitations. On your limitlessness, I mean. How about this? What you think you become, what you feel you attract, what you imagine you create. It has to be God number three, right? The law of attraction states that whatever you focus on, think about, read about, and talk about intensely, you're going to attract more of into your life. That's God number three. And you are the creator of your own reality. It can only be God number three. Because you cannot make your own reality unless you already have all of the raw materials that you need to make it happen. Ergo, we must already have it all. We can have anything we want to have. Woohoo! So why don't we? So as anybody says to you, you can have anything you want. You are the creator of your own reality. I'm going to bet that most of us feel one of two things, either frustration because we've asked ourselves the question a billion times, then why don't I have it? Or we go to another place in our minds, which is, well, I can tell you why I don't have it. It's because I did this thing or I'm, I have that issue. It's the what's wrong with place. And there's actually nothing wrong with you, but you have to convince yourself of that to get free of that. And so for me, this brings up a question, where are the answers? Where are the answers? We've looked, we've looked, and we've looked, and we've looked, and we've looked, and where do the answers lie? Well, I can tell you one place they do not lie is they don't lie in the past. They don't lie in looking backwards. That biblical story about looking back and turning into a pillar of salt, I finally understood as that means I'm regretting. I'm looking back and I'm crying. That's why I'm a pillar of salt. So I can use the things that are in my past to say, that really stank. I hated that. That sucked. Didn't like it. I don't want to be that way anymore. Or I don't want to be with that kind of person anymore in my relationships. Or I don't want this. It helps you define what it is that you want. So if you can use it as a place to get the food you need to bounce back to look forward, I think we are making the best use of our past possible. But to the contrary, if we go down and down and drill down and down and down into the pain, where does it come from? Why did I have to do this? Where's the, where's the, the center of the, uh, of the ball of, of wool? It's never ending. We'll never get there. How do we keep moving into looking more forward? How do we stay out of language and perspective and belief and, and self of sense and identity that, that, that would keep us slowed down? How do we do that? Well, the way that I found it works so beautifully because it is the building block of all of everything is feeling. You have to have an experience of something different than you're used to if you want to if you want to change. You can't stay where you are and change. It's kind of the, the good news and the bad news. Um, if you love growth, then that's all good news. If you are somebody who likes to be very, very comfortable and not move forward and yet you have to change, it's not, it doesn't feel like good news. The way that you get it to be good news is to start to feel into your own experience. And get authentic, get real with yourself, get honest with yourself. 
not self-abusive. I used to hear being honest with myself as, okay, now it's time to beat up on me and tell me all the bad things. <laughs> That's not what I mean. You have to feel your way into feeling just a little bit better, a little bit of relief. I know I've talked a little bit about this in other talks. I want to talk about that from the perspective of our relationship with God and how we think about God. You have to go first. God already gave you everything. He's given us everything. It's all swirling about us in the space between you and this screen. In that space between you and the screen you're looking at is the raw material. It's just not slowed down enough to manifest. And God's not going to do that for you because God, God gave you free will. And God's not going to decide for you what you should have. That would be God the parent. It's okay to have that relationship of God the parent with God if you want it. But it will not allow you to be a co-creator. So you have to use your your on your understanding of feeling emotion your vibrational self your intuition your mind starting to feel into how can i feel better now how can i feel those god things now how can i feel compassion just that much just that much you know like just a tiny bit how can i feel that now and it's not as difficult as you might think and the fact is, as you feel it, you are putting yourself into that current that carries you into the right tributary of the river that you've been looking for. It's been already there the whole time. It's just been waiting for your energy to align, to get in the right current. This is what faith is. This faith that if I just do this, if I just let myself feel all, you know, feel a, a piece of what God has given me that there's only that reign of grace waiting to keep going, keep me going, keep me moving forward, keep giving. That's faith. That if you go first, you feel into what you want to feel, what you want to be, what it would feel like if you already had that thing you want. If you can focus on it, if you can learn to focus on it and anticipate it, you can have it, you can allow it, to manifest in the perfect way for you. Now, I find it really interesting that emotion is a huge key for this because that is one of those feminine things that is so feared by men of power and control. And so we all, we women and men have learned to be a little not so happy about our emotional bodies. I know I was depressed for 30 years. Going for the thought of going to my emotions was not what I considered a good time. But when I did that this past summer and I found my way out of it, I knew. I knew that I could use my emotion to have more alignment with joy, with ease, with compassion. And that that attracted more and more and more, that it was cumulative. I never had to start over again. What a concept. What an incredible concept. So is it that simple? Like, do, is that the answer to everything? Just feel a little better, you'll be fine. <laughs> well, yes, but the getting there is very unique. And you have a lot of ways of thinking, a lot of beliefs, a lot of perspectives, a lot of set and sort of knee-jerk ideas that in order to turn that key in the lock of your personal prison, you'll have to confront. Now, it's your key. The keys are in your hands. It's your keys, nobody else's. You don't, you get to decide. I find this really wonderful that i get full control decide is it is it going to what's going to help me 
give myself, take myself a little off the hook, a little off the cross, you know what I mean? A little off of that, you should, or you shouldn't, or this is why you're not getting what you want, all of that stuff. Is it going to be visioning? Is it going to be meditation? Is it going to be walks in the forest? Is it going to be dancing? Is it going to be prayer? What's it going to be? What's going to give me a sense that I am allowed and I am powerful enough to use those building blocks? I don't have to wait any longer to experience that godness. That's a much more joyous journey than, oh God, there's something wrong with me. Oh God, I, I'm, I'm being punished. Or, oh God, I, I have no power to make a change. I'm sick and I have no power to make a change over this. I'm just going to have to like fight my way forward. What if we could allow instead? What if we could practice that art of allowing? <laughs> Cat. <laughs> what if we could practice that art of allowing the moment, right? And also, if God has already given everything, then what we're practicing is allowing Godness to be through us and as us. That's a profound profoundly different way of looking at one's relationship with the divine. So we want to look forward. We want to look into greater goodness in little tiny ways. I was talking to a friend of mine yesterday who lives in England, who's having a very tough time emotionally. And I said to her, listen, one of the things I've been learning is it's not about the big answers. You know, I still don't, I don't yet have the job that I'm looking for. I still don't have the relationship that I've always hoped for. I still don't have this, this, and this. I said, but my peace of mind is incredible. And there's little things that, that people are doing for me that are just, and big things that it, the things that are coming to me, Somebody gave me a, a, a stationary bike for zero dollars. Somebody bought me a seven foot tall cat tree for zero dollars. You know, it's like th we tend to go, I buy these things. No, allow, 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 allow. But if you're looking backwards to find out why you're not looking forwards, it's, it's a crisscross. It doesn't work. It's confusing to us, and that's okay. We have to practice this different way of going forward if we want to move into a new paradigm. So we know that if we practice feeling just a little bit better about something right now, that that doesn't mean that, boom, 100%, when now we're going to be joyous and happy forever. It can happen. It's called enlightenment. You know, like, so we have examples of it, the great beings and all that. But for most of us, it's a matter of practicing. And I'm finding it really rewarding to practice it because I'm t each time I get into a stuck place of thinking I'm supposed to suffer or I'm, or I'm supposed to blah, 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 whatever it is I'm supposed to. And I take myself off of that hook joy comes up ease comes up and i used to panic like crazy like crazy when i was looking for work the entire job search really was just like how much can i panic because i figured that would help how do we move into this thing we have there's a few things i want to mention we have to be very honest with ourselves about our emotions we have to be willing to try on this idea that it, that I, if I actually make a little tiny step, a teeny step, and that if I feel even just a smidge better, that that is important. That changed my vibrational being, and it changes what's coming my way and where and where I'm going to end up putting myself into that I didn't even anticipate. We have to like give that just um just a little bit of a try. 
And we have to, we have to practice. What does it feel like to feel compassionate toward myself? What does it feel like to become more caring? What does it feel like instead doing that instead of going, I should be this, I should be that, I should be that. Just want to mention one more thing. When, when you realize that you really do have the power to create a different life for yourself, everything changes because you're now standing in a completely different place in regards to your life. It is a massive internal change that you then get to unfold apparently for the rest of your life because you've gone from uncertainty. Well, like, what is it going to take for God to come through? You've gone from that uncertainty to the solid ground of, I have a place in this play. I have things I can do. I can set my sails and my boat will actually go there. That's certainty. That's faith. You've gone from beggar, to God's partner. You've come to a place where you understand that the physical comes second and your senses and emotions and those building blocks of God are what come first. So that is the inter that's the internal work, not the internal work I did for decades, which is the what is wrong with me work, the I have issues work. So the minute you open, God opens more. So stop waiting for God. God already gave it the office. You go first. And get ready to receive and allow so many things that God has already given you. Thank you, God, for giving us this community to share with, to grow with, to love in. Thank you for guiding each of us to a happier place for helping us to grow in you and you in us thank you for preparing lessons and for preparing good to rain upon us for this coming week thank you for guiding our feet so we can be in the right place at the right time not only for your giving to us but for us to give and share with others thank you for giving us the absolute knowledge that it is no miracle when a miracle occurs. Thank you for allowing us to occasionally see the miracle you have worked or experience it in our own lives. Thank you for giving us wisdom that we can share when we can regain our community by Zoom next week. And thank you for showering us with so much love from you direct and from those around us. We say thank you, thank you, thank you, dear God, and amen. amen.